Welcome. This is a technical explanation of how planes stay airborne by floating on the air, rather than flying, as it's currently understood by most people, including pilots. Obviously, planes fly in the colloquial sense, so let's get started. In short, planes fly because the propellers push the plane forwards, pushing air over the wings. The wings then convert this airflow into vertical lift. I present two opposing views as to how planes generate vertical lift and fly. One view taught at flying schools is based on magic. The other view is based on a rational observation of reality. Every pilot is taught that planes fly because of the curvature on the top side of the wing produces low air pressure, which then generates vertical lift. We call this the conventional theory. There's only one problem, it's total bollocks. Aviation can't claim to use Bernoulli's principles, as it doesn't actually use any of Bernoulli's mathematical formula or equations in the calculation of lift. It's obviously utter nonsense because it doesn't correspond to what we see in reality. Specifically, it cannot explain inverted flying, how aerobatic planes can fly with symmetrical wings, how some planes can fly with only straight wings, boats can generate vertical lift without wings. Also, the logic of conventional theory is false. Correlation is not causation for low air pressure and lift. No upward airflow on the wing to support vertical lift. Bernoulli's principle doesn't apply to aircraft wings and this theory can only describe a stall. But more on these in the detailed video. For now, let's just focus on one of these many problems. This conventional theory cannot explain how planes can fly inverted. When the plane is inverted, the curvature of the wing is now facing downwards, not up. So the wing should pull the plane towards the ground, according to this theory. The critical factors that influence vertical lift on a wing do not include low air pressure on the top of the wing. The essential thing needed for a plane to fly is a positive angle of attack on the wing to displace air downwards. Wing curvature is not essential. In normal flight, the wings function to generate lift in two ways. Firstly, the underside of the wing pushes air down. And secondly, the curved upper side of the wing also pulls air downwards. In inverted flight, the wings still function in a similar way to normal flight. The wings maintain a positive angle of attack and displace air downwards. Mass displacement theory is based on the same principles that explain why hot air balloons and boats float. Namely, that they displace a mass of air or water that is equal to their own mass. If they don't, then they sink.
Boats can rise out of the water and float on the air for the same reasons that planes fly. As the boat goes faster, it displaces a greater mass of water and air, pushing the boat upwards. Physical evidence for mass displacement is the backwash behind the plane. The wing vortexes are clearly pushing the air mass down and backwards as a critical part of how a plane generates lift. According to the mass displacement theory, to stay airborne, a 10,000 kg Harrier needs to displace 10,000 kg of air every second. These estimates are based on a few simple assumptions. The faster the aircraft, the less wing curvature matters. Now we take a look at the physics of flight at the molecular level. This demonstrates how lift is a result of the interaction between the air molecules and the wing. 
The dots in this animation represent air molecules. In flight, more air molecules hit the underside of the wing, and each molecule strikes the wing with a greater force. The top side of the wing is angled away from the direction of flight, so it hits less molecules and hits each molecule with less force. So in flight, the plane is coming into more direct contact more aggressively with a greater mass of air underneath the wing than above it. This generates lift. Consequently, the molecular explanation of how planes fly is consistent with the mass displacement theory. So what? Well, if you're flying, then your pilot doesn't know the true reasons how and why the plane stays airborne or stays afloat. No wonder so many planes still crash. Thanks for listening and safe flying.